In this video tutorial, we will discuss how to draw Lewis line diagrams. So before we begin, let's do a brief view of chemical bonds. The noble gases of group 18 or 8A are extremely stable or unreactive due to their full valence shells. To achieve stability, other atoms will either gain or lose electrons to achieve a full valence shell. The stable ions are now said to be isoelectronic with the noble gas they are closest to on the periodic table. So, what I'd like you to do at this point is press pause, try out this section over here, and press play when you're ready. But let's go over one example together. Sodium is in group 1 of the periodic table, so it has one valence electron. Now, is it easier for sodium to gain seven more electrons in order to turn into argon, or is it easier for sodium to lose one electron and become neon instead? So obviously it's easier to lose that one electron and become isoelectronic with neon than it is to gain seven electrons to be isoelectronic with argon. So we write down that sodium will L1 lose one electron in order to be isoelectronic with neon gas. All right, so press pause and try the rest yourself. When you're ready, press play and let's compare your answers. All right, and here are the answers. Take a look at beryllium. It would need to gain one, two, three, four, five, six more to get to neon or it can lose one, two, and pop up on the other side as helium. So it's easier to lose two and become helium. Phosphorus can gain three electrons, one, two, three, in order to become argon, or can lose five, one, two, three, four, five, to become neon. Obviously it's easier to gain three. So gain three, become argon. Iodine, much easier to gain one to become xenon than to lose seven in order to become krypton. So gain one, turn into xenon, while oxygen can gain 1, 2 to become neon, or lose 6 to become helium. So it'll gain 2 to become neon. Alright, let's just move ahead now. Up until this point, we've been drawing a lot of bohr rutherford diagrams. So sodium is in period 3, 1, 2, 3, so it's got 3 electron shells. So 3 electron shells, and it's in group 1, so it has 1 valence electron. So 1 electron in the valence outermost shell, while the other inner shells are all filled up. But when it comes to chemistry, the core electrons rarely change. It's mostly the valence electrons that participate in the chemical reactions. Since they are the most important, we can ignore the core electrons and just draw the valence electrons. This is known as a Lewis diagram or a Lewis dot structure. It is a lot faster and cleaner to draw it this way. All right, so try out these remaining elements, draw the Lewis structures for them, uh, press pause, and when you're ready, press play, and we'll take it up together. All right, beryllium is in group two, so we draw two valence electrons around its chemical symbol. Phosphorus is in group 15, or 5A, so it has five valence electrons. Just like in the Bohr-Rutherford diagrams, I want you to draw them in the north, east, south, and west locations, and then start doubling them up if we need to. So there's our five electrons. Iodine is in group 17, or 7A, so it has seven valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Oxygen is in group 16, or 6A, and that is what its Lewis diagram would look like. And these are the remaining answers. Now, as we saw earlier, atoms will try to lose or gain electrons in order to achieve stability. With sodium, we could either lose one electron to become stable, or gain seven to achieve stability. What's easier? Obviously, losing an electron is better. With sulfur, it can either lose six electrons or can gain two more. What's easier? Well, obviously gaining two is easier. So here we have one situation where an atom wants to lose an electron and another atom wants to gain electrons. So one man's trash becomes another man's treasure. Here we can draw an arrow to show the sodium is giving up its electrons and transferring it to the sulfur. And once the sodium loses that outer electron, it now has that full valence shell and it is now a sodium cation with a 1 plus charge. However, once the sulfur gains this electron, it's still missing one more electron to achieve that full lactate structure. So would it be more helpful for me to add another sodium atom, or would it be more helpful to add another sulfur atom? If you're not sure, try them out. Adding another sulfur doesn't seem to be very helpful, because this sulfur needs an electron, and this sulfur needs two electrons, so they both want electrons. But if I add another sodium, 
This electron can then be transferred to this sulfur and now everyone has achieved a stable structure. The sodium is happy because it's given up its electron, so is this one. And the sulfur is also stable because it's gained the two electrons to match up and get a full octet structure. Now this is just rough work. In order to get full marks, I need you to clean this up. I can accept this as the final answer. Notice how we've organized electrons in the four areas in order to spread things out. So north, east, south, and west. But you can also draw it this way, where a single line represents a bonding pair of electrons. So all we've really done is just connect the dots. You'll also know that I used dots and X's to represent electrons. The X's are for the electrons that belong to the sulfur. The dots are for electrons that belong to the sodium. This is how I can differentiate where those electrons originally came from. The last option is to just draw a square bracket around it to show that these are now ions, one plus charge. Sulfur is also an ion. It's gained two electrons, so it's got a two minus charge, and sodium lost an electron, so it's a one plus charge. Just make sure you don't draw it out like this, because at this point it looks like the sodium is attached to the sodium, when in reality, the sodium must be attached to the sulfur. Sodium attached to the sulfur. Don't put the two sodiums side by side. All right, so what I would like you to do is try it out for these remaining examples over here. Press pause. And when you're ready, press play and we'll take it up together. So calcium is in group 2 with 2 valence electrons, while sulfur is in group 16 with 6 valence electrons. So calcium needs to lose 2 electrons, while sulfur needs to gain 2 electrons. So that was easy. Now let's clean it up. And we have 2 lines to signify this attachment and this attachment over here. Again, you could also draw it this way or this way. Alright, so here are the remaining answers. I only showed it using the line diagram method. I didn't use the uh, square brackets or showed every single uh, electron. Uh, but again, either or is acceptable.